Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife video to share with you guys. Not quite a full review because I have already reviewed this knife before. This is the Kaiser Lundquist Feist. Though it is in micarta and it is a liner lock as opposed to the full titanium exposed frame lock version that I reviewed some time ago. Technically, it's different, but it's largely not. So it's not going to be a full review. We're going to kind of speed through this um, just so you guys can get, uh, you know, all the information as quickly as possible without watching a duplicate review. Thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you are enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and you'd like to support me and get your hands on some cool stickers and other stuff at the same time, there is, of course, a link for my Patreon right down in the description. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This knife was sent in to me uh, by Jason, the same gentleman who sent one of the uh, Vanguard Micarta Sheepdogs from Kaiser as well. Let's go ahead and get a quick measurement here real quick. Is that redundant? A quick measurement real quick. Overall length of the Feist coming in at 6.5 inches, blade length coming in at 2.8 inches. Yes, uh, factually less than 3 inches, so that's nice. Uh, and then your cutting edge is about 2.75 inches overall. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see here this is not a large knife, not at all. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall, getting closer in overall size. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. So there you go. There's your best size comparison right there. How's the action in the sky? This uh, is a Kaiser knife. Kaiser knives are made in China. This knife is running on bearings and it is a front flipper. I'll tell you why I like the action on this one so much more than the frame lock version. Excuse me, I'm going to move my mat just a little bit. It is not an exposed frame lock. Considering how small and slender this knife is, on the exposed uh, frame lock version, you really have to be careful about where you're bracing when you're trying to get that, sorry, uh, I don't have a lot of room right here, right? I just really messed up my phone. <laughs> Ouch! Um, but anyways, normally that's not gonna be the case because you're not gonna be deploying the knife between a mat and a camera, right? The exposed frame lock version, you have to be really careful about where you brace because if you uh, push uh, on the exposed frame lock with your fingers, then it makes it incredibly difficult to deploy. Considering this is a front flipper, it is not an orthodox means of deployment versus what we are all used to, meaning thumb holes, thumb studs, flipper tabs, things like that. On this guy, you can put your fingers wherever you want, which is great because you don't have a lot of room in the first place and you can front flip it no problem. The action is pretty darn smooth. It's not completely and totally false shut, but it is nice and smooth and has a clicky detent. This is substantially better than the more expensive frame lock version of this knife that comes in the exact same steel. We're going to talk about that here in a sec. This is a liner lock. There's plenty of room to disengage it. It's not aggressive or anything like that. Honestly, you can sit around and flip this thing all day. I've got no problem with that. Carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's actually thinner than the Para 3. It is also uh, nowhere near as tall or as long as either the PM2 or Para 3, which are the two knives that I always compare to because everybody has experienced these or a lot of people have and uh, people don't complain about them. So yeah, this is basically a long pill-shaped knife. Not gonna be an issue. Blade stock thickness on this guy. Let's go ahead and measure that here real quick. Just trying to speed along as quickly as possible. Blade stock thickness on the Feist coming in at 120 thousandths. I'm not sure that I'm actually getting that grabbed in the right place. Let's try back here. Yeah, it's actually less than that. 117 thousandths. That's kind of more like what I was thinking. What's on the inside? Well, this is a, this is a micarta version. This comes in a lot of different variants, by the way, and I will link this knife in this exact micarta variant right down below, but that list will populate all of the different versions of the Feist that you can possibly get right now. I'll also link Kaiser knives in general so you guys can take a look at what else they've got. On the inside here, we have a little bit of milling. Interesting how they just did a few holes and stopped right there. It doesn't really matter. There's not a lot of material here. It's not a big knife, right? Again, we're looking at a 2.8 inch blade. So keep that in mind as we weigh it, 2.05 ounces. It's just not gonna be a problem. But the bug out weighs 1.8 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this isn't a problem to carry. This is what I consider to be ultra lightweight. It is a slim, 
easy to carry knife. It doesn't really matter what type of pants you're wearing, as long as you're wearing pants. This is pretty much gonna be easy to carry, no matter who you are. It also makes a perfect little, you know, kind of formal event carry, or if you're an office carry, right? It's not super intimidating, it's not huge. This is just a good EDC size knife. It's not gonna scare a lot of people. If you're if you work around somebody who's gonna be afraid of this, in this situation, I don't normally say this, but in this situation, it's probably more their fault. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I'm like respect the people you're around, but seriously, if you're afraid, if people are afraid of this, it's like I I shouldn't say that. Everybody has their reasons. Everybody walks a different path, right? So you should still respect that, right? If you're waving this around in somebody's face, then it's your fault, right? But if you're just cutting open a box and you know Karen at the front desk is like, oh my god, you know, well it's your fault, Karen. Calm down, Anyways. Um, what have we not done here? Oh, hardware check. Go ahead and get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive, very recommendable. You can find them right down in the description. Uh, pivot. T8, no surprise there. Body screw. That's a T6, for sure. But there's only one. All right, no big deal. It's a T6. Be careful if you're going to disassemble it, right? It's not, a, it's not a deep head, so make sure that bit is in there when you turn it lest you destroy your T6 bit, yeah, even the Wea stuff, or the um, the one screw holding this, you know, the body in, in place. That's cool though, minimal hardware, this would be an unbelievably simple knife to take apart, and I appreciate that. Man, so much easier to flip when I'm just standing and normal, you know, not sitting and trying to do it in front of me, like in here. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get into the meat and potatoes of this. So this is essentially, it's the same feist, but we have these beautiful, uh, heavily chamfered micarta scales. Really cool. I, I love micarta, and everybody loves micarta right now, because it just, <laughs> everybody's all about that vintage, classy look, and this is a perfect profile for this, right? Um, these come in a lot of different colors of micarta. You can check them all out down below. There's like a dark gray, there's like a tan, there's this color, whatever. I think you can even get these in DLC coated blades. I think, I can't remember. This is the tumbled version. Um, I just, the overall look of this is so simple, classy. It's so cool. I, I love it. I also love that they crown the spine. I love that. It's so cool, man. Look at the steel on this guy. S35VN. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You can see Feist up there. There's a number. And then it says Lundquist. Honestly, I'm okay with all this. I'm okay with all that. It really looks great. Uh, don't mind the Kaiser logo. Um, no sharp corners up here. Absolutely. The edge is done well. Um, it is fairly thin, right? The edge feels good. Really, I don't have a problem with that. I love the profile. I love that I can bring my finger out to the nose, you know, and do those types of little cuts. Just really great. Absolutely. Love that this is an S35VN considering the price. Moving back here, we have a nice, very Rick Hinderer style standoff back here. Uh, the thing, the frame, you know, it is, it, it will flex a little bit, but I mean, come on, what, like, what, what are we looking at here, right? We're looking at a slim profile EDC knife. This is not a hard use knife. Even though I can get a full four finger purchase, I really don't care on this thing. I just, most of the time I'm going to be holding it like this or like this, right? Which is going to, but if you really need to, right, you need to cut that thick uh, toe strap or whatever with your Kaiser Feist then okay. Uh, pocket clip looks excellent. Uh, it is a, it's to my knowledge, it's titanium. Uh, let's get the old magnet out. Yeah, titanium clip. Uh, it is straight, but it does have a continuous ramp, right, uh, underneath here, so it should, you know, match or conform to the whatever thickness of pocket seam. It is very easy in and out of the pocket, absolutely. Uh, uh, I've tried this in jeans, tried it in just kind of like workout pants. Um, no big deal at all. Uh, the entire, I mean, the, the, uh, how the hardware looks and the placement of it looks really, really good. And oh my gosh, there's no lanyard hole. Hallelujah. I don't care about lanyard holes. That's great. Carry position of the pocket clip. This is all the more that's going to be sticking up out of your pocket, which I find to be completely and totally acceptable. And they didn't have to worry about a lanyard hole because they just didn't put one on there. So that's great. Centering on this guy. Just about, just about on, I'm going to guess, probably. I wonder if I can. I did this in the other Kaiser. I wonder if I can just give it a little turn and change it. If not, it's no big deal. If you guys don't know, I did the centering trick in the other, the, the, the Kaiser Sheepdog video. I actually explained it in the video, even though I've got a separate 
video that explains how to do that, right? I showed it in the video how to do it and how the, everything could be easily adjusted. Yeah, yeah, it just needed a little bit of a turn. So that's fine. How's the action now? The action is exactly the same. So that's fine. If yours is off center, just give the pivot a little bit of a turn. If it still doesn't, if it still doesn't center up, then you can use the centering trick. I have a video about that. Uh, you can you can watch it. It 99% of the time it works, right? On uh, constructions that are similar to this. Um, yeah, uh, this is a liner lock locking up at 25 to 30%. We already talked about the centering. Where's the stop? I believe it's internal. Yeah, can you see that bar right there? Does it follow or does it stay put? It does follow. So this will function much like external stops, which is fine. It does not really necessary on a knife of this size. This isn't a hard use knife, right? It's just simple. It's fine. It's kind of neat that they hid the stop pin in there. Nice and smooth. Really feels good. What are my complaints here? Well, you know, there are no true ergonomic lines. There's nothing really to lock you in, but it, does it need it? No. What they've got here for the handle to complete this aesthetic look that they were obviously trying to achieve, this very simple, narrow, sleek profile, right? They achieved it. And you are able to hold on to it, and it's comfortable, right? The pocket clip is, I guess, if you're really going to bear down on it. Even if you are going to bear down on this, the pocket clip really doesn't seem to be a, an issue. I like this so much more than the titanium version. So much more. You can get these things for $130. It's pretty good. Honestly, it's pretty darn good. I'd have, I'd probably would have been real happy at like 110 or so, but I've always said, you know, everything could be 20 bucks less and make us a little happier, right? Considering Kaiser's reputation for quality, I've, I've got a pretty high reputation of Kaiser. I like them. They do a great job in this price range. The most untapped territory of the knife world, I think, is the 100 to $150 price point. Kaiser's in there, right? They throw a lot of stuff at us. They throw a lot of weird stuff at us. But every now and then they 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 have a home run, right? I think this is this is just about one of those. Um, this is cool. I think this is probably kind of an underdog in the. Sorry, I'm wiping off fingerprints. I think it's kind of an underdog right now. But if you're looking for just a simple, like if you, I mean, that's what's cool about this thing. It's got fidget factor and it's got measurable fidget factor over its titanium brother that has the exposed frame lock, right? It's much better, way better. There are better uh, front flippers out there, mainly because they're larger knives, they've got more room to engage this stuff. But this works really well, substantially better than the titanium version with the exposed frame lock. And honestly, I like the look of this on this particular knife. I'm a huge titanium nut, but I like the look of the micarta better than how the titanium one looks. I think this just looks substantially better. This, this micarta in particular look, just looks awesome. Man, I think this is the OD green. Maybe it's the gray. I don't know. My card always looks totally different in person versus what you see on the um, uh, on on like pictures and stuff. But what you're seeing on camera, I'm looking at it in real life, and I'm looking at it on camera. It looks almost identical to what you're seeing right here. So this is really cool. At 130 bucks, 129 bucks. There's a there's other versions by the way. There's carbon fiber that you know is also a liner lock, works really well. Those are a little more expensive, but geez, for 130 bucks, can I recommend this? Yeah, honestly, I can. Um, I kind of still almost did a full review on this, right? Um, I just kind of, I just kind of went really quick. Um, this was a short and simple one. I wanted to take a look at it because I think this is cool, and I think the more people that actually get their hands on this, the more they're going to realize that they like it a lot. Especially people who have already handled or owned the titanium version. This ver you're gonna like this version better, I think. I, it, it's better all the way around. 130 bucks, not a bad price. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put this knife on my most recommended knives playlist, or my you know Metal Complex's recommended knives. That's gonna be about it today, guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. Like I said, this exact knife and all other variants of the Feist will be listed right at the top of the description, along with Kaiser Knives in general, so you can check out what they've got going on right now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe, because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.